our economic principles vocabulary will be economics. Who can tell me what it is? Just the most basic definition of economics. Can you guys read that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Blake, what did you say? Money in the economy. Money in the economy. Definitely has to do with money. The practice of money and how it's used. Both of you guys are right. So it is a study. So it's it's a field of study. So the study of and it doesn't just have to do with money. It has to do with everything. You know, oil, everything. You know, plastic, dog poop, everything has a is a good. Okay, so it's the study of how things are made, bought, sold, and used. The study of how things are made, bought, sold, and used. So it's way. It's just how things flow within our, from people, from person to person, to country to country. The way things move around. And it can apply to any good or service. Like money. Money is a good. You can buy money. Just like anything else. And it has a price. Alright? Alright. So you got, got, got that for economics. Alright. Next word. Resources. Resources. Now this is, you hear resources and you automatically think just like natural resources. And that is one type but there's actually four types of resources when it comes to the economy. All right? So but what our resources are, these are our factors of production. That are used in the pr production of goods and services. I'll give examples. I won't write them down there. Obviously, your natural resources, your human resources, your capital, and your entrepreneur. Those are the four types of resources. You must have all. Oops, hit a button. You have to have all of those in order to produce a good or service. Okay. Can anybody say this word? You guys are so smart. When I have regular civics, I say Scar City. Scar City. Yeah, it's scarcity. Yeah, it's definitely scarcity. What is scarcity? It's the it's where goods aren't available mm -hmm. as readily as they would be in a normal kind of situation. That's Probably, right. And due to other certain circumstances like a pandemic or mm -hmm. about is there a single item, good, service, anything that is infinite? No. 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 Eventually it ends. No. There are no infinite goods. So everything is finite. That means that we can define a, a, a quantity to every good that is made, bought, sold, and used on the planet Earth. When those things are in high supply, would they be scarce? But if they were in low supply, would they be scarce? Yeah. That's so scarcity is simply the term that we use to determine to, to, to describe something that is in low supply. Okay? So I'll say it a little bit more fancy. We'll call it the inability to satisfy all wants at the same time. Because that there's there are a variety of reasons why things are scarce, you know. Like the hair on the top of my head is very scarce. It's all, you know, this is all of the my hair there is on in the entire universe. That's all there is. It's very scarce. But blades of grass, pretty plentiful. Alright? Not that anybody is interested in purchasing the hairs on the top of my head. Alright? There is a there is a buyer for everything, I guess. Alright. Next. Choice. This is a pretty simple definition. What is choice? Yeah, it's selecting an option from a set of possible alternatives. 
selecting an item from a set of possible alternatives. Anybody ever been to Walmart? Oh my goodness. You have 400,000 choices to make in there. Literally. You could make 400,000 choices. So you want to go buy cereal. Nick, what kind of cereal are you buying? Uh, honey, bunch of honey Bunches of Oats. Blake, what are you buying? Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes, Hunter? Uh, chocolate Crave. Chocolate what? Crave. Chocolate Crave. Sarah? Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch? Uh, honey, I don't know. Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios. What did you say, Nick? Honey Bunches of Oats. Fruity Pebbles. We all have a different... Fruity Every Pebbles. single... Mine is a Crackling Oat brand. The chocolate Fruity Pebbles. The fr chocolate. Chocolate. Cocoa they do. Cocoa Pebbles. <laughs> chocolate so, so, so if you if your mom hands you the... The, 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 the grocery list, and she just writes cereal on there. You got a lot of choices to make, don't you? You have a, a lot of different alternatives of which to choose. America is pretty unique in this, guys. Not If you go to certain grocery stores, you got maybe four or five choices of cereal. Okay? Whereas, you know, you go to America's grocery store and you look at the cereal aisle, it's both sides of the aisles, you know, 500 different types of cereal. Um, and we all have our own favorites. So when you make that choice, there are a lot of, what we're, what we're going to look at is why did you make that choice? Okay, and that's what, that's what businesses want to know. Because like, they want you to choose theirs. And so they want to increase things in your mind that will make you choose their, their product. So choices is, is a pretty important thing. Okay, so, but it, it's simple in the definition. You just pick something but how you pick it why you pick it that that's that is you can be make millions and millions of bucks in marketing and things of that nature if you can make somebody choose your client's product okay five opportunity cost this goes long you, you may not have heard this economics term before so I'll just tell you this goes along with choice. So, um, Hunter's going, he's buying the Crave, chocolate Crave. Well, there's 400 other different cereals that he did not choose because he chose his favorite, the chocolate Crave. He didn't choose the Fruity Pebbles. All the ones that he did not choose, that's the opportunity cost. All right? So, it is the, what is given up when a choice is made? It's the highest valued alternative. So let's say that, oh, I'm in links today, and I hear some of my students talking over you know, cheeseburgers. And they're just talking about cheeseburgers and talking about how they had cheeseburgers over break and their favorite types of cheeseburgers. And Man, now I'm my way home, guess what I'm getting? I'm getting a cheeseburger because I'm dying for a cheeseburger. So... Between me here and my house, I have I have McDonald's, I have Hardee's, I have Zarbies have cheeseburgers, yeah, sheets, sheets Tudors, I think so. Tudors and Arby's. Okay, so I, I get a Big Mac or I get a thick burger or whatever those other places offer. So I'm thinking about it, and I get in the car, I'm like. Mm. Haven't had a Big Mac in a while. Oh, but man, those sourdough Frisco burgers at Hardee's are awfully good, too. So I narrow it down between those two. Those are the two I really want. But let's be honest. Can I really eat at both a burger from both places? I have to make a choice. And so I choose to get the sourdough burger from Hardee's. So, so, but I also wouldn't, mind, wouldn't have minded a Big Mac. The Big Mac in that case, would be the opportunity cost. It is the highest valued alternative that I did not make. Okay, so it's kind of like the runner-up, the opportunity cost. So individuals have to consider the value of what is given up whenever you make that choice. Like, well, I guess I, 
there's no spe secret sauce on my thick burger. So I'm, that's part of the opportunity cost. Like I'm, I'm weighing that out. So it sounds like something dumb and simple, but it's just the one you didn't pick. Well, there's a lot of research and ingenuity and thought that goes into making you want to pick that one you didn't pick this time in the future. Okay, so a lot of, you know, you ever watch the Super Bowl? Yeah, you ever see those commercials? They're like, they pay like $30 million for 30 seconds worth of time, and it's gone forever. Do you know why they pay so much money for that time? Everybody dies Because it works. It works. If it didn't work, they wouldn't do it. Okay? Commercials work. All right? All right, so opportunity cost. Uh, next, also a simple one. Price. What is price? The cost of an item. There you go. The amount of money exchanged for a good or service. Are prices something that's concrete, set in stone? No. Change all the time. Change all the time. Every product has a price, and every price is fluid. It all depends upon the demand and the quantity. All right. Incentives. We used to offer incentives at our school before COVID for stuff. You know, if you do this, then you get that. What, what's the definition of an incentive? Yeah, that's pretty good. And the purpose of this incentive is to make you do what? Motivate. Things that motivate. So, an example of an incentive. That is more, that would be more like, an, uh, well, no, that's just like price. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, here's the donut, you do this. All right. An incentive would be like, okay, so my kid, let's say my kid's very young again. Cause, and I would say, okay, Jackson, we're going to take you out to dinner. And you can go to McDonald's, or you can go to Dairy Queen, or you can go to Subway, any fast food place, okay? Nine times out of ten, he's going to choose McDonald's. Why? The toy and the Happy Meal. The toy and the Happy Meal. And also they had a little ball pit, about the playhouse. Those places didn't. Now... Did he, is the food of a different quality from McDonald's and those other places, or is they all about the same? All about the same, you know. All about the same price, all about the same. However, in his five, six, seven-year-old mind, McDonald's is far superior because he gets a toy with his meal, and there's a place where you can go play. Did those things motivate him to always say, I want to go to McDonald's? Nine times out of ten, that's where he wanted to go. Fortunately, he will not eat that disgusting food anymore. So I don't have to go there. All right. But yeah, incentives are just things that motivate. And it can be anything. Hey, buy one, get one free. Guess what that is? That's an, incentive. an incentive. Okay. it's It can be a variety of things. Coles Cash, incentive. There's little coupons, the baseball team sales, softball team the sales. Kroger card. Kroger card, incentives. <laughs> incentives. <laughs> Apps, incentives, things that motivate you to want to spend your money at that establishment. Like, is it kind of an incentive? Like, an incentive whenever a car dealer gets a thousand dollars off every week, would that be considered an incentive? Absolutely. Bring in your junker, and we'll give you four grand, no questions asked. Incentive, a sale, incentive, anything that motivates you to spend your money. Watching a commercial on television is an incentive because it's the purpose of it is to make you. Spend your money to motivate you, all right? Even if there's no deal at all, just seeing the commercial itself is, incent is in incentive. Okay, 
Supply and demand. I'm going to talk so much about supply and demand in this unit, all I'm going to write here is determines price. Because you are going to know this inside and out, backwards and forwards, before the end of this unit. I promise you. But let's look at each part individually. What is supply? What is supply? That's exactly right. The amount of a good or service that a producer is willing and able to sell at a certain price. So a lot of moving parts going on there to determine supply. But as you know, if I'm if I make sock puppets, I have a sock puppet factory. If I produced 85 trillion sock puppets, the price of my sock puppets are probably not going to be very high because I've overstimulated the supply. Have you seen those new uh, those new Hummers, those electric Hummers? Yeah. How much are they? Uh, $110,000. Well, you want the good one. Let's get the $110,000. <laughs> Plus, you, they won't be at the dealership. You know how you get it? You got to reserve it. You got to call and reserve it. I mean, you reserve a $110,000 vehicle, which you've never even sat your rear end down in. Yeah. You think they made a bunch of them? Probably not. They're $110,000, too. So, what if they made a whole bunch more of them? They'd be on lots everywhere. People would be sitting in them all the time. What would happen to the price? It'd be lower. They just didn't make a lot of them. Same way with the Broncos. They haven't made a bunch of them yet. They're expensive. Okay? But that's what supply is. You know, they, they were not willing to make produce a bunch of them. Initially, I would imagine, because they're electric vehicles, people were still like, eh! Not ready for that yet. I'm sure that it's extremely powerful and extremely well, awesome. So basically, what you're saying. But is that's the also a house payment. Say it one more time, Nick. The less supply of a car, for example, is the higher the price is going to be. The less of anything. Okay. okay. The higher the price is going to be. Okay. I was. I mean, I was. There. Are, is that the only factor that determines price? No, but it is definitely one. Like. Um, acid wash jeans. Oh. You guys like those? I think they're ugly. Who wants to buy a pair of acid wash jeans for me? I have I have your size. It'll fit perfectly. I promise. Ten bucks. I mean, I would buy them just to see what they are. Yeah. All right, they're the jeans from the eighties. Okay, acid wash jeans are jeans from the 80s. Okay, maybe they're in stock. I don't know. But they were very popular. Is it like when you bleach your jeans? They're very light colored, yes. They were popular in the 80s, and so therefore they were very expensive. Or like when I was in school, like, no offense to you guys, but you got your holes in your pants. That's fashionable now, right? You didn't do that to your pants, right? They came like that. Okay. Um, that's a, I, like, if my, if I was like, mom, I want to buy these jeans with holes in them, she would have punched me in the face. Like, <laughs> like you look, I'm not going to send my kid to school with clothes with holes in them. You know, that's like, that's how she thought. Now it's fashionable now and I get it. I'm not like criticizing. This is what it is, you know. It looks more like four. Maybe it looks kind yes. Of Yes, but and now you buy them like that because that's what's fashionable, and I'm sure that they're probably very expensive. Probably more expensive than the the pants with no holes in them. They are. are they really? Yeah. I wonder why that is. I can buy it. because it's fashionable. It's fad. It's like a fad. Okay, like I'm trying to think of something. How about a? Anybody want a fidget spinner? No. Could I sell you a fidget spinner for a dollar? Maybe. What about five years ago? Yes. Ten dollars? Yes. Probably. Yeah. Maybe ten dollars for a fidget. Is it really worth ten dollars? No. It's a junky piece of junk. 
Why would they? Why could I have sold them for ten dollars then, but only a dollar now? That's right. Popularity also determines price. Okay. There's a lot of things, and that's what we're going to be examining in this whole unit. Okay. All right. So we did supply, demand. What's demand? The amount of a good or service. What kind of people? When people spend their money, they're called consumers. consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price. The amount of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price. So there's a lot of things that determine demand, the quantity of the item, the popularity of the item, the price of the item. The utility of the item. Taste. I mean, you guys interested in buying art? Anybody going to buy any art in the next year or two? You're not? You might? It's kind of an acquired taste, right? Maybe if it was like shoes that someone painted or something. <laughs> okay, okay. Depends on what it is, right? If I was to buy an apartment, then maybe. Then maybe. Okay. It's a, it's a taste. Right. You know, it's not for everybody. Okay, so that's kind of what demand is all about. All right. Next. Production. Is there anyone? All right, this is where you put it all together. Combining of resources to make or to make goods or services. Make goods or provide services. Where you put it all together. So all those different types of resources, which we're going to look at individually. When you take your human resources, your natural resources, your money and all your stuff, and somebody's in charge guiding the way, and you start making something, you are in production. Production, ultimately, the goal of production is for people to buy your stuff. And that is called consum consumption. Consumption is using goods and services. It's just using stuff. Spending your money. You are a consumer. It doesn't, nece it doesn't necessarily mean you're actually eating something, like that kind of consumption. But it could be. I'll use a lot of food ones because I love food. But it's just using goods and services. All right, our last four definitions are the different types of resources. So like well, land or natural resources, the same thing. Land resources or natural resources are the same thing. What is a natural resource? Sure you can. A resource that comes from nature. That's all it is. So, if I own a donut shop, what are my natural resources? Wheat, sugar, eggs, yeast, water, Energy to you know to turn my ovens on or deep fryers, yeah. Oil. Those are all my natural resources. Okay. Now depending upon what it is you're producing, your natural resources are going to change. If I'm you know operating a coal company, 
I'm going to have a different set of resources. If I'm, you know, if I own a grocery store, I'm going to have different natural resources. Depends on what it is. Okay. All right. So, but natural and land are the same type. Those are the resources that come from nature. All right. Then you also have labor or human resources. What is this? That'd be your man-made, like or resources that are made into the production by human. By human effort put forth to make a product. Human effort put forth to make a product. All right, so Alexis owns a restaurant. What's your favorite kind of food, Alexis? Uh, Italian. Italian restaurant. Belize. Belize. What are some human resources that Alexis is going to need? A cook. She's going to need somebody to cook. He's a what? A what? Carriers. Carriers? Servers. Servers? Okay, waiters and waitresses. She's going to need a manager. Somebody to clean, busboy, custodian, uh, host or hostess, bartender, accountant, somebody to somebody going to bring groceries to, like, is she going to get her groceries delivered? Is she going to go pick them up? How does the food stuff actually get there? You know, is she going to have somebody parking cars? Is she going to have a valet? Is it going to be a night? You know, is she going to have uh, you know? Okay. Sure. Why not? Um, is she going to have a band? Is she going to have, like, you know... Sounds like a nice restaurant, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. So it's just the human effort needed. To produce this rest, to produce the whatever, okay. So it de all depends on what you're producing. Depend will determine your labor, okay. All right, next one is your capital resources. It could be, but you're exa you're exactly right. Your profit or how much money? Yeah, I, that's a, I keep getting it. It is absolutely. Anything needed to produce. Things needed to produce something. Yes. Now, that being said, are natural resources capital? Yes. Anything needed to produce something. So water could be considered capital. You know, your heat bill, capital. Sugar, anything, anything, anything. Money, tools, machines, factories, buildings, warehouses, trucks, anything that you need to produce is your capital. So what would be some of the capital that Alexis would need in her Italian restaurant? Food. Food, tables. Chairs, Chairs, drinks, silverware. napkins, silverware, money. dishwasher, she would need money, she would need money, things to clean the tables, masks for employees, the building itself, the building itself uniforms. parking lot, uni uniforms. She would need a uh, licensing to carry out a license for your know, food handler's food card. Food. Is that all you need for a restaurant? The list is probably about 10,000 things long, isn't yeah, there's it? Lots of there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff you have to have. So it's just anything you need to produce. Okay? The last element of production is, is the boss. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. It is a French word. You, an entrepreneur could be self-employed, but yeah, definitely, because you're the boss. And that's what it is. It's like the French that means risk taker. Entrepreneur. 
The boss. This is the person who takes the risk. In hopes of what? That's right, hopes of making money. So Alexis opens a restaurant. She gets she, you know, she got all her natural resources lined up. She hires all her staff. She has everything that she needs to, to make her restaurant. And now, you know, in order to do this, it's taken her about seven million dollars. Well, Alexis is like most folks and does not have seven million dollars lying around. So she goes to the bank and borrows $7 million, and now she has to pay the bank back every month based upon the income that she receives from her business. If her business does well and she's able to pay back her bank loan, anything extra and additional after that, she gets to keep because her business is being successful, it's being run well, you know, she has, she's hired good staff, she, she, she employs them well. She, she taught, she trained them effectively, and her, her business is thriving. Or, you know, she has a bunch of meth, people selling meth out of the kitchen, and, you know, it's not, it's not going well. People stop showing up. She, it, things are bad. Things are bad. And she's, she's not able to pay back her bank loan, and she goes bankrupt. But that's the risk that she has taken, and that is what an entrepreneur does. Okay, so please submit these to Schoology at this time.